Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful day today. Still cold, but we are just so glad that you're all here this morning worshiping with us. So let's just, uh, let's write to it and let's worship God this morning.
from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. You're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift the name on. continue and we are just going to ask you to dwell on the lyrics just go for it when you're ready and let's sing this chorus together me 
God, we just come here today to tell you that we surrender, that we give everything that we are to you, Lord. We surrender everything, we surrender all, because we know that when we do, Lord, you take us, you fill our lives with your love, and there's nothing that we can't do when we give it all to you, Lord. We just thank you for always loving us, for always being there for us, and for always guiding us even when we look away. Thank you, Lord. In thy name, amen. Amen. Hi, good morning. So good to see everyone here today at the Salvation Army Croc Center Ministries. Uh, Glad that you've chosen to worship with us. Uh, This is a body of believers who are following hard after Jesus and sometimes stumbling and then getting back up and following hard after Jesus and knowing that the whole time his arms uh, enfold us with his love. So glad you're here with us today. Happy Women's History Month. March is Women's History Month. And uh, so we applaud all the women in our, not only in our congregation, but in our Christian movement, in the Christian church, in history in general. Uh, Women really make it happen. And so we're so thankful for you and appreciative of you and all your great skills and talents. And we look to you to to lead us on. The 117th Psalm says this, Praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's what we've done already this morning. That's what we're about. Man, the worship team was pumped, weren't they? They were ready to go. I think they could have just led the whole time, which would have been fantastic. And uh, I was just thinking in my own spirit, like, I I need to have that. Not ferocity, but like uh, excitement and passion about praising the Lord. And, uh, and they helped me this morning, so I'm super thankful for that. Yeah, again, we're so glad that you're here with us, whether live in the room where it happens uh, or, um, or online in the room, or whatever, wherever it happens for you. Uh, we're, we're starting a new series today, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I do want to just point, highlight a few things happening during the week in the body of life here at Croc Center Ministries. Every Tuesday night, um, we have something we call the open table. It meets in the Rolando room, which is just to my left, your right. And that's a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, and it's a time where we eat together and laugh together and have fun together and look at God's word together, all in about an hour and 15 minutes. It's pretty fantastic. And then on Thursday nights, John leads a Bible study. I think we had 14 people on Thursday night at Bible study, which where we meet, which is the fireside room over at this end of the, the campus, uh, right in the, not cul-de-sac, yeah, cul-de-sac. Um, 14 people kind of packs it out, doesn't it? So it's kind of, it felt great, and there's a fire going, and we talked about uh, Genesis, and it was it was a really great discussion and a great teaching time from John. So Thursday night at 6, that happens. And then I uh, also just want to remind you that part of, we believe that part of following Jesus is uh, surrendering ourselves to him, and part of surrendering is surrendering a portion of our uh, income that we get to him and to his to the work in his name so uh, we do have uh, offering towers that are available to you uh, at the entrance and exits of the theater and then also if you ever have checked out tithely if you haven't checked out tithely.com nope tithe.ly that's right tithe.ly uh encourage you to go there and check it out and if you want to give that way that's it's really simple and quick and painless and um you just look. You did use the search bar and look for Croc Salvation Army San Diego Croc Center, and you can give that way. I uh, want to have a prayer this morning, as we usually do. But this morning, I'd like us to focus on uh, some specific needs. Uh, we just got word, or the latest word we got is that Betty Johnson is still in the ER. She went yesterday. Uh, Dave and Betty. Betty went yesterday. And uh, Connie just shared with me that um, she's she's still there. So Dave's hoping that she'll be released today, but we don't know. So we want to bring um, Betty Johnson before the Lord. And then I don't think Louis here is Louis here, Coco. Yeah. So Louis's been Louis uh, battling cancer, and um, last week we found out he was in the hospital. He's now out of the hospital. He's moved. He sold his house, which is behind us, several streets. Uh, now he lives over in La Mesa um, with his daughter. But he's out of the hospital, but he's still in, in a lot of pain. So if you could remember Louie, I, I will in a moment, but in your prayers, whether you know him as Louie or Coco or just that cool guy, 
with the beret or whatever. Um, he's such a good man. And so please pray for Louis Coco. And then just a, it's not a personal prayer request, although it is. I've had a rough week because my, a mentor of mine, Phil Needham, he's a, a leader in the Salvation Army, has been, was in ICU. He had a couple of um, episodes and he was in ICU. Then he got out of ICU, but he was still in the hospital. The last I knew he was still in the hospital, and, but showing signs of recovery. So it sounds very positive, but, um, you know, when, when there's somebody that you look up to and they, they, start, uh, they start having issues, it's hard. So uh, please be in prayer for Phil Needham as well. And then you know all kinds of things. There's cries from your heart as well and people that are close to you that are hurting. So uh, be in prayer for them. I'll kind of represent us in a moment. Uh, in prayer, but um, but be in prayer for the people that you know that aren't, aren't well as well, aren't well physically, aren't well spiritually, emotionally, uh, that Jesus would touch them, heal them. After I pray, Norm's going to come and read to us the scripture for today. Well, let's pray. Uh, we do praise you this morning. We have praised you this morning, Lord, and we'll continue to do so. That's what we're about not here just on Sundays, but as, as your people. We want to be people of praise, and your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. And um, so we know that you're here. We know that you, you hear our prayer. We know that you hear the cries of our heart, and we know that you see us when we cry and uh, when we're in pain for others who are experiencing pain. So please, God, be with uh, Betty. She's going through what she's going through, and be with Dave as he... Um, takes care of her. Please uh, heal that situation in, in her body. And for Coco, we pray that you would continue to be with him. We thank you for his life and for his witness and for um, his friendship to many of us. Pray that you would give him peace and help him be, um, be pain-free or really experience your love and your uh, comfort in that pain. And for Phil Needham, Father, we pray that you um, you would be with him and heal him and um, give him peace. And for his wife, Keitha, uh, pray also your peace. Thank you for them and for their lifelong witness to so many and their graciousness and their love for each other and their love for you. Help us to be like that as well, God. For others that um, are here today thinking and of and praying for people that they love, I pray that you would um, minister to the people that they're praying for and uh, maybe it's one of us that's supposed to reach out to one of these people or people that we're thinking about. So help us, give us the, the holy boldness to do that, to step out in faith and to go and talk to someone that's hurting and so that we can be a part of that healing that you're bringing to their lives. We love you, God. So, we love you so much, and we're so thankful for you, for your son Jesus and for the Holy Spirit. And we look forward to the rest of our time together. May we uh, really look into your word and then live it out in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. We're going to be in the book of John, in chapter 13. We'll be reading verses 1 through 17, titled, Jesus Washes His Disciples' Feet. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, do you not realize now what I'm doing? But later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, those who have 
had a bath need only to wash their feet. Your whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor his, is a messenger greater than who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. The readings of God's word. Thank you, Norm. Uh, we begin, as I mentioned a few moments ago, we begin a new uh, series today for Lent, and it's uh, leading us to Easter. Just in case um, you don't know uh, or need a reminder, Lent is the time from when, uh, Ash Wednesday, a few Wednesdays ago it started. It's the 40 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, uh, minus the Sundays. So if you're, if you're counting on your calendars, you're going to come up with more than 40 days if you're counting Sunday. Uh, but we kind of take a, a, a day off uh, from Lent on Sundays in order to, to celebrate and praise uh, and, then, and then return to observing Lent. So it's the 40 days before Easter. And we have a Lenten. This is our Lenten sermon series or uh, series that we're experiencing together. Uh, you, we've all heard the phrase, less is more, right? Less is more. Uh, what, what context, feel free to shout out an answer, um, there's no wrong answers, but what context is that phrase usually used in? Less is more. That's mean. <laughs> Stacy said talking, that's true. That's true. Say less is something like, is it, yeah, John? Yeah, words. Who said, makeup, who said makeup? Yeah, makeup for sure, yeah. Oh, you, you're saying that Annette said it. I got it. And it's makeup, yep. Yeah, design, design on high-end homes. Less is more. Less is more, right? Any others? Those are really, those are fantastic. What? Yeah, things in your house. Less is more. Don't overdo it. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's usually used in relation to decorating or planning. I hadn't thought of talking, but um, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> and the idea, the idea of less is more is that too much, too much, even of a good thing, that's another whole saying, right? Too much of a good thing. Too much can distract uh, or detract from the most important thing. Too many things can detract from the most important thing. That's one way to look at the way that Christians over the years have observed Lent. The Lenten season is another way to say it. Uh, in other words, they, they, might, they say, we've said, Christians over the years, uh, let's get rid of something or some things so that we can more intently focus on Jesus. Less is more, right? And that's a totally valid way to observe Lent. And um, if you've given up something for Lent in order to serve God more faithfully and to see Jesus more authentically and to hear the Holy Spirit more clearly, way to go. Lord bless you in that. That's a, that's a worthy pursuit. Nothing wrong with that. That's, there's a lot of good about that. Another way to approach Lent, and the way that we're going to, at least as a body in the next six Sundays, is, um, is to kind of turn the less is more phrase uh, a bit, make a turn of phrase. In the life of a Jesus follower, boundless is more. Boundless is more. Jesus said in John 10, verse 10, that he came to give life, life to the full, abundant life. Um, the, par the paraphrase of the message says, a more and better life than they ever dreamed of. That's the kind of life Jesus came to give you and to give me and to give everyone. An abundant life, a free, boundless life. A child of God who is free is boundless and her or his life should reflect that freedom. Uh, this, the, our lives should be boundless. 
but the question comes, how can we live a boundless is more life in 2023? The answer isn't a shocker. In the gospel accounts, we have uh, where we have the life of Jesus uh, de depicted for us. He has shown us how to live a boundless is more life. And that's what this Lenten sermon series is all about. So over the next six Sundays, we're focusing on Jesus. Uh, another shocker. <laughs> Specifically, three disciplines seen in his life and how those same disciplines in the life of a Jesus follower, anyone who follows after Jesus, how those disciplines can make a boundless is more life possible. Uh, we're going to zero in on surrender and generosity and mission. Just those three things. We're going to look at Jesus and surrender and surrender in us. We're going to look at Jesus and generosity, and we're going to look at generosity and me and us. And we're going to look at Jesus and mission on Palm Sunday, and then on Easter Sunday, we'll look at uh, me and mission or us and our mission. That's what this ser series um, is all about. And we're going to zero in on those three disciplines, and they're, they're from our friends... Um, from a group, they say infinitum, but they're Canadian and English. And so I think we would say infinitum, because it kind of means on and on and on and on, like ad infinitum, right? And I just, we have a slide that shows the three uh, disciplines that we'll be looking at over the next six weeks. Uh, so the first one is the hands up, that's surrender. The next one is the hand with the heart over it, that stands for generosity. And the next one is the hand out. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a piercing or not. Yeah. Um, that's mission. So generosity, surrender, and mission, right? Extending it to others. That's what we're going to look at in the next uh, six weeks uh, leading up to Easter and even on Easter. It's a Latin word, but we're, we've changed it just to boundless. Bound less is more. Each week, um, oh, actually... Over the last two years, Infinitum or Infinitum, they have partnered with World Vision to uh, produce a series of videos for Lent so that people that want to all around the world can kind of follow the same um, teaching or the same design toward uh, Easter together. Um, so each week, via a video, we'll hear from Daniel Strickland, who's a, a Salvationist, a Salvation Army person that lives in Canada uh, with her husband and family as well as from one of us that are in the regular preaching rotation. And the desire is that when it comes time, once again, on April 9th, when it comes time for the people of the resurrection right here at Crock Center Ministries to celebrate Easter, that we will be ready, more than ready, having witnessed Jesus exemplifying a boundless is more life, and having that same witness within us, that we will be ready to live a life more and better than we ever dreamed of. I hope that that's what you desire as well. That's the hope for this series. That's the prayer for this series. That's the goal, and that's what we're uh, headed for. We just sang a few moments ago, we were prisoners, now we're running free. We're bound less. Boundless is more. So these videos are longer than those we sometimes show uh, when we get together for worship. Uh, and that's why we've included them as part of the sermon, part of the message. So each week somebody will be up here, then they'll cut to the video. That'll be six to eight minutes uh, and re require our attention and then back to the preacher to kind of draw everything together. Please God. Um, so... This morning, as we consider Jesus and surrender, that's what we're talking about today. Danielle's going to refer to the scripture that Norm just read, John 13, 1 through 7, where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Uh, and we'll come back to that passage for just a few minutes after the video. So right now we're going to watch this video. Again, I think it's about seven and a half minutes, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back at you. You know, oftentimes I think that um, I've heard, you know, that surrender is a power posture in the kingdom of God. And we always kind of have this addiction to the time, you know, the mountaintop experience or the big, huge moment of surrender. 
And all throughout scripture, we'll always go back and we'll be like, and then this happened, you know, where's Jesus? Like he's like sweating drops of blood, but then he surrenders, not my will, but yours be done. And sometimes what we neglect is that the reason Jesus and the reason that other people in the scriptures can get to those powerful moments of big surrender is because they've postured their lives. They've been practicing surrender in all of the moments before that. So we want these glorious moments of surrender and oftentimes when the stakes are high and when we're invited to surrender and we're not quite there yet, we always think we failed this great big test instead of really realizing that we have multiple times throughout our day to practice surrender. We have an invitation on a daily basis to model, to practice, to try again, to surrender on a daily basis. And that's why, you know, the surrender prayer, the daily surrender prayer for me is a really big one because it's not surrendering this huge moment. Although one of those days might come up, it's surrendering this day. It's learning the pattern of surrender for this day and practicing that. And then usually what happens is I'll pray a prayer of surrender uh, in the morning and really just say, this is my heart to surrender everything to you. Things that are too big, things that I think I've got. I want to surrender my ego, but I also want to surrender my insecurities. You know, I want you to have all there is of my life. And then sometimes at night when I'm uh, struggling to fall asleep, I'll actually review, you know, where was I surrendered? Where were the invitations? Where were the moments? Where did I miss them? But then also where did I uh, get them, you know, and thank God for those opportunities and pray that he'll give me more the next day. And here's what has begun to happen to me. I begin to notice now during the day, those moments that I might've missed and sort of gone through later on that night, I'll be in the middle of my day and I'll have this opportunity to surrender. Maybe I'll be feeling overwhelmed and just wanting to like go to a comforting or numbing exercise. And I'll remember, wait a minute. I told God I was willing to surrender what was too hard for me today. And I'll say, God, this is too hard for me. I'm surrendering this over to you and to your power. Or maybe it's just that I'm feeling really amazing and I've got like it all wrapped up and I go ahead and plan out this thing without any uh, conversation with Jesus at all. And I'll remember, wait a minute. I told God I was going to surrender to his direction. So maybe I should stop and pray and ask him to help me here. Whatever it is, I, what I've discovered is that as I practice the posture of surrender, surrender becomes an easier and also more habitual practice so that it becomes easier and easier to surrender. And actually it becomes even easier to pay attention to those areas and to see those places where surrender is the right posture. I think as we look at this week, John 13 is one of those passages, you know, where um, Jesus washes the disciples' feet and he's modeling. I mean, there's so many things going on in this passage of scripture that we don't have time to break down, but hopefully this week as you meditate on some of it, you'll discover those beautiful revelations of God's love and how transforming it is to live, especially as a leader, in such a way that you're not constantly trying to prove or please anybody except God. <laughs> And um, one of the most beautiful things that keeps ministering to me every time I read this story is that the scripture says that because Jesus knew who he was and where he was going, he took off his rabbinical robe and he put on the towel of a servant, the robe of a servant, and then he began to wash his disciples' feet. And I think this is just so key because Jesus knew where he was from and where he was going. You know, he because of his true humility, which is agreeing with God about who you are, he was able to submit himself in love to one another because he wasn't trying to prove anything. And I don't know about you, but I even find even the posture of surrender can be this like vehicle by which we're proving how good we are as disciples or we're proving how humble we are. Or even our acts of service can be these weird like kind of humility, but like so everyone sees how humble we are, <laughs> sort of this wrestle with an ego. But it's out of a healthy sense of self that Jesus does this. And then what Jesus is doing when he washes his disciples' feet is he's practicing this posture and then he's modeling this posture to the disciples. He's saying, you know, you have been inundated, whether it's in religious circles or whether it's in your cultural norms with things like hierarchy and competition and trying to prove and outdo each other and try to come up with some status order. You know, I mean, every single thing in our culture is related to this who's more successful or who's better or who's greater and even in religious circles where we start judging each other based on our successes or accolades or you know whatever the size of our churches or like whatever it is the bigness in our bank accounts i mean it goes on and on and on 
And then we see each other as, as, as competition. And Jesus says, I'm going to show you another way to live. And a surrendered person is no longer trying to prove or please anyone. They are just who they are, doing what it is that they need to do in order to be not only obedient to God, but free to serve. And, and, and one of the things in this scripture, because he knew who he was and where he was going, it was out of security that Jesus was able to love the disciples, to serve the disciples, and to model what a surrendered life looks like. A surrendered life is free to serve and to serve the least of these. And, and, and in serving the disciples in this way, Jesus is ministering to them physically. He's washing their feet. Somebody needed to do it. He's ministering to them emotionally. It's intimate, it's tender, it's kind. He knows they're about to face a very difficult thing as disciples. He's, he's being physically tender with them. He's, he's ministering to them um, spiritually. He's showing them a better way to lead and to love and what a surrendered life looks like. And then he's doing something really radically socially. He's disrupting the social class of the time. He's still doing that, by the way. He's subverting it. He's saying the greatest person doesn't mind becoming the least person. This whole hierarchical order and who's most important seated at certain places or certain tables, that's no longer a thing. That's not a way that we lead. Let me show you what to do. And then he simply says, as I have done, that's what you need to do for one another. Surrender. Surrender your rabbinical robe. Surrender your, I need to prove something. Surrender people thinking highly of you. Surrender not including people that offend you. Remember, Jesus is washing all the disciples' feet, Judas is included. To surrender all of those things and then to embark on something beautiful instead. A life of love. Pray with me. Lord, I'm in awe of your posture of surrender. In your most difficult moments, you turn to the Father in prayer as I turn to you now. And I confess that Jesus' posture of surrender seems beyond my abilities and still. I open myself and offer myself, all of me, to you right now. Amen. friend of ours, so I don't mind saying that I, I just laugh at the subtitles because I don't know whether, I can't decide whether it's because she's Canadian or whether it's because she talks so darn fast. <laughs> but it's nice to have those subtitles, at least it was for me. Um, I hope you enjoy that. I think that she's a great communicator and um, we know that she lives this way too. So it's, it's just good to be able to know that somebody, as we do every Sunday, know that the person bringing the message is someone that's lived it and is living it as well. Uh, one time, when I was thinking about this passage, one time I was asked, several years ago now, I was asked to bring a devotion to a bunch of leaders at, a, at something I was attending. And the people that were preparing uh, this time, the people that uh, the Lascanas have worked with in the past, they're employees of the Salvation Army, and they wanted to make sure everything was just right and that I had what I needed. So I said, yeah, would you mind having like three or four basins of water ready and a bunch of towels? And they're like, um, why? I said, well, I want to use it in my devotion. We're talking about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And I, yeah, just have a bunch of basins of water ready and some towels. And these guys, they like everything to be just right in a program. And so I'm, and they're, they're a little nervous. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Bunch of waters, basins of water, and some towels. <laughs> so we go to this thing, and I, it's time for devotion. And sure enough, there's some basins of water all around the room, and there's towels. And uh, these guys are nervous. I could just tell that they were nervous as to what I was going to do. So we get through the devotion, and at the end, I mentioned something to the crowd of leaders that we were with. And I said, you'll notice that there's basins of water around the room, and there's towels. We're not going to wash each other's feet. Just chill. Relax. We're okay. But I just wanted to point out how uncomfortable it was that everybody was thinking about that. And then I, then I heard it from the other guys, the friends of ours that, are, that were planning the whole thing, that that was kind of a mean trick to play on them. But I needed them not to be in the know in order for it to really work. But that's true, right? Like, it's uncomfortable to surrender to somebody, to bend down, wash their feet, whether literally or figuratively. It's uncomfortable to surrender to someone else. 
Uh, the new movie, Jesus Revolution, tells the story of Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie, Lonnie Frisbee, and the Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, California, just up the five a bit, a spell, as they say, in the late 60s and the early 70s. So it's a big movie right now, Jesus Revolution. Um, I would recommend seeing it if you haven't or if you have a chance. Um, and, about, and it's also about, mainly about, how many young people from the so-called hippie movement were converted into the Jesus movement. And when Pastor Chuck Smith opened the church doors to people who looked and dressed and spoke uh, differently than the regular Sunday crowd that he was used to, he encountered a lot of opposition, a lot. Um, even though many people were coming to Jesus, some people were concerned. What were they concerned about? At least in the movie, they were concerned about the carpet. They didn't want the clean carpet uh, to be soiled by the dirty feet of these young hippies. Uh, that were supposedly Christians and trying to follow Jesus. So on one Sunday, one of these, uh, we'll call them defenders of the carpet, arrived at church to find his pastor down on his knees at the church entrance, and he was washing the bare feet of the newest church member, these hippies, of all the newest church members, before they stepped onto this a sacred carpet. And it's really a hilarious moment in the film, but there's a, a seriousness as well to that moment. There's a serious sacred side to Smith's actions uh, as well. He was not only on his knees washing the filthy feet of others, but he was surrendering his will as well. Instead of fighting with the carpet crowd, uh, he was freed up to serve. He didn't really stand and fight. He got down on his knees and served, and uh, everybody benefited from that action. Uh, today, March 5th, 2023, is the first wedding anniversary of our youngest daughter and her husband. They got married a year ago today in Santa Barbara, and that's where Stacy and I were a year ago today, um, officiating that and crying and trying to make our way through that ceremony. It was kind of funny, kind of sad, um, but pretty beautiful. And at this wedding in Santa Barbara, it was outside at a park. It was really beautiful. But at this wedding, the two of them included something that I don't know that I've seen in any other wedding. I'm sure it's happened. I don't think they made it up. But they included a foot washing. So at this wedding, at some point, they kind of went over here under this gazebo or whatever and sat at a bench. And while a friend of ours was singing a song, they were washing each other's feet, the bride and the groom, our daughter and her husband washing each other's feet. It was beautiful. And what a great way to start off a marriage of surrendering to each other. And really, it's not just marriage. It's any relationship. Relationship, horizontal relationships, we surrender to each other. A vertical relationship, we definitely want to surrender to God. Surrender is key to a successful relationship. And this is the, the, the surrender is power posture in the kingdom of God uh, statement that Daniel referred to in the video. It's, uh, it is a power posture, but, but in a different way. It's like an upside-down kingdom values way. Um, it's from an I'm the king of the world posture. You know this one? I'm the king of the world. To a um, please let me, let me get down on my knees and wash your feet posture. It's that kind of change. And it's a monumental shift. It's huge. It's huge. Not everybody can do it. But everybody that follows Jesus is called to do it and empowered to do it. It's not impossible. I just wanted to point out a few things. One is, uh, Danielle mentioned about Judas, but, uh, and that scripture talks about uh, Jesus knowing that Judas would betray him, also focuses on Peter and is washing uh, Peter's feet. And Peter's like, no, 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 I can't have you wash my feet. And Jesus is like, uh, I need to wash your feet or you'll have no part of me. Jesus is like, and Peter's like, oh, everything, then I'll take a shower, right? Peter and Jesus is like, this will do for now. Just calm down. Um, but I, I just wanted to point out that with Judas, it was someone who many would say didn't deserve Jesus to wash his feet. I mean, he was going to betray him to, to death. And uh, many people would say he didn't deserve that. But also with Peter, Peter was someone who he himself didn't feel like he deserved to have his feet washed by Jesus. And later, Peter would be like the... the the, the, um, the main pillar of the early church. 
And people would maybe look back and wow, Jesus washed his feet. Did, did he really need to do that? Or he'd done all these great things, Peter. Well, so it shows us that Jesus, Jesus served all of us. The Bible says that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life or surrender his life as a ransom for all of us. So whether, uh, it doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter whether we think we've committed the worst sin against God or will in a, in, a, in a short while for some coin or whether we've done great things for God, started a whole church in his name. It doesn't matter. We, we, we need to be part of Jesus and we need to realize that he came to serve us. A surrender doesn't come naturally to us, but it must come to us. It'll probably most likely involve uh, conflict and struggle and battle um, within ourselves. In 1781, the British surrendered at Yorktown. In 1815, Napoleon surrendered after the Battle of Waterloo. In 1865, the Confederate Army surrendered to the Northern Army. In 1919, Germany surrendered at Versa Versailles. In 1945, Germany and Japan surrendered to the Allied forces. And I wanted to ask the question in 2023, what surrenders will there be? What major world-changing surrenders will happen in the lives here, in the life of this body and in, in our own body? In our own life. You know the phrase, come on out with your hands up, right? I grew up on westerns that my dad would watch. Come on out with your hands up. Uh, whether it was gangsters or westerns, it was, that was the line. Come on out with your hands up. And it, was, it meant you're done, right? You're surrender. Surrender. It's time to surrender. There's a songwriter that I really admire, and he, and he uses this phrase as a metaphor for what needs to happen in our lives. And he, he writes these words, come on out with your hands up. There's still time before you die. Come on out with your hands up. Put your hands up and reach for the sky. So the whole song could be just about a guy that's done and needs to come out, and, but it's really about come on out with your hands up. Put your hands up and reach for the sky. There's still time before you die. Come on out. So no matter what crimes we've committed, no matter how many great things we think we've done for God, surrender is the key for us as disciples. Um, remember Jesus in the garden, Matthew 26? Scripture says that he fell on his face. He wasn't on his knees in the garden. Sometimes, in fact, almost all the time, artists have depicted Jesus in the garden and his robes are all pristine and everything's beautiful and he's kneeling and kind of doing one of these. But the Bible says he fell on his face. That's surrender, right? He fell on his face, and a few times he prayed, yeah, Father, if this is possible, could, could this not happen? Could we do it another way? Could this cup pass from me? And he ended those prayers with, but not my will, your will be done. Right? That's surrender. That's serious surrender. And before the garden prayer of surrender, before the cross prayer of surrender, before the garden prayer of surrender, an act of surrender, I mean, go all the way back. We're looking at Genesis in Bible study on Thursday nights. If you go all the way back in Genesis to the beginning of the Bible, uh, there's surrender there. Jesus was there. Jesus is God, was with God, created all of that. And then, and then it, you go to the first part of the New Testament, and Jesus surrenders that place that he had. All, place, all kinds of places in scripture tell us how he emptied himself, he gave himself, like he surrendered that heavenly place literally to be one of us in order that he could keep surrendering in order that we could live with him for eternity with the Father and with the Spirit. So Jesus was all about surrender and I just want to close with just uh, uh, two prayers of surrender that uh, one I want to read to you, it's an old hymn and then one that we're going to say together. Hopefully you got a card. That card is going to be for this week and for next week. Because this week we're looking at uh, Jesus and surrender. Next week we're looking at surrender and us. And then we'll have uh, two more cards for the next, uh, the four weeks after that. But the first prayer of surrender is this old hymn. And it just says, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. 
Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. And the last verse of this great hymn says, Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever, only, all for thee. That's surrender. We're going to pray this prayer from um, Infinitum, this prayer of surrender. Uh, we're going to pray it together, and it's going to be on the screen for us. If you don't have a card, but if you have a card, it should be the same words. Uh, let's pray this prayer together, and then, we'll, um, and then we'll worship together as well. Oh, just to, just to remember I said sur- this is surrender on the postures, and then generosity, and then mission. And so this is uh, from, from closed fists, like you're not surrendering, to surrendering, right? So you can either do that posture or not, but we're going to pray this prayer together. Lord, I confess that I spend too much time defending and fighting my position, my attitudes, my opinions, and my behavior. I confess that I often fight against you, your plans, and your will. I confess that these hands do not reflect how you lived and how I have experienced you. Instead, I choose to hold my hands up. I surrender all I have to you today. I choose surrender. May it be so. Lord bless you. Thank you, Major, for the message. And we are just so excited for this new series. Definitely, this is something that we're looking forward to. Let's stand up if you're able to, and let's sing this chorus together.
surrender, prayer of surrender. Um, so thankful that we sang that together. Um, we'd love to share fellowship with you out to the my left, your right, right after the service. And um, the blessing today is this, kind of uh, taken from the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Pause. In, my, in this church, in, this, in my life, as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Lord bless you.